Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time for another Ewok Galactic Challenge. So I got my little cuddle friend Wicked here with me. It's a licensed official plush toy from uh, Shanghai Disney. Doesn't quite look like him, does it? Nah, it's okay. He keeps me company. Anyway, so um, I do believe myself to be probably one of the most knowledgeable people on this little planet when it comes to Star Wars Galaxy Heroes Ewoks. And I'm going to tell you that if you do not have Princess Nisa, this is going to be a challenge. You absolutely need her for this reason right here. Battle opens up and there goes a Relic 8 Poplu, a tank. Relic 8, properly modded, goodbye. And then immediately after that, before I get a turn, there goes Ewok Elder. Huh, maybe that was just some bad RNG, right? So let's try it again. I'm going to show you how to win, and it's actually not hard. You can probably do it with gear... 12 if you really really hate your life and just don't have a lot of things to do and you want to spend 15 minutes grinding away i bet it's possible with gear 12 but if you have princess leia or not princess leia, gl leia uh, requirements then you can get through this you can definitely get through this you may need to do some remodding and i'll walk you through that in just a second also but here here's the proper lineup see uh, you, you want chief chirpa wicket princess nisa Logre and Ewok Elder. And here's why you need Nisa. Check out that opening volley. Yeah, how many times did did Han Solo just shoot? And we got full health, got protection, we got bonus protection. That was not a fluke. Let's try it again. Here we go. Three, two, one, slow internet. And opening volley this time on Chief Chirpa, full health. Still got some protection, a little bit, not much. Looks like one slice, I can't tell and tons of bonus protection. And just because I'm anal retentive about proving points, we'll do it a third time. And then I think maybe even, a, I don't know, we'll move on. See, there we go. Look at that, whackity whack whack. And we are perfectly fine. So why is that? Whenever an Ewok is stunned or dazed, uh, Princess Nisa gives them 100% protection up. That means that their opening volley cannot kill any of your Ewoks if you have them sufficiently modded for lots and lots of health because protection up is based on health so despite what swgoh.gg says you do not want to mod your ewoks with protection let's say that again and let's get our friend in the picture you do not want protection mods on ewoks no almost all of the SWGOH and GG guidance regarding Ewoks is just patently wrong. Um, you could try to convince me that Poplu deserves some protection, but I'm still going to say no. And you'll notice that I'm not even using Poplu in here. Poplu is not actually going to help you in here. In fact, Poplu could potentially slow you down. Why is that? Because Poplu does not have any offensive power worth anything. He does not remove turn meter. And he, while he has one target assist, there's nothing else in his kit that's going to substantially help you. His basic dispels uh, all enemy buffs, but that's not a problem because once you survive the opening volley, you're gonna control the turn meter of the rest of the match. And my Ewoks, they are all Relic 9, and this still took a while. So let me explain the process, let me explain the mods and uh, what the event modifier is right there. So basically, if you have an attacker and you use the event modifier, the event special, it calls all your Ewoks to assist or all your allies to assist. Uh, I think they do reduce damage, but they gain um, defense penetration up or something. And that's not really gonna help you. It's not gonna make any significant difference. Now, the nice thing about the mass assist though, is that it's gonna give everybody 20% turn meter. Why? Chief Chirpa's leadership says whenever an Ewok ally uses their basic, aka assist, they're going to gain 20% turn meter. That's nice, but you really want to use the event special on your support units because it's just going to flat out give everybody 30% turn meter, which is already beneficial. 
and through Nisa and Chirpa, by using a special, you're going to get random assists anyway. So somebody's still going to attack out a turn, getting 20% turn meter, aka 50, because the event special gives you 30, and then 20 more for the basics with 50%. Now, with Wicket, every single time he has his opportunity to use a second special, you want to target Ewok Elder and keep him under stealth. In the event that the enemies take a turn and they target Ewok Elder and they somehow delete him, you are in trouble. Especially if you're in lower gears, like gear 12, relic 1, 2, 3, you need to protect Ewok Elder. Absolutely protect him. So Ewok Elder also needs to assist whenever possible, which is what Ewok uh, Wicket is going to do with his assist, because whenever Elder uses a basic, he has a very high chance to give the entire ally Ewok team 25% turn meter and himself 50. Whenever Chief Chirpa uses a basic, you want to attack an enemy who already has 50% turn meter or more, because if you do, he gains a lot of bonus turn meter, and I think he ends the turn with like plus 70% turn meter or something. It's ridiculous, but you want to target enemies with high turn meter. Now, CLS is the hardest one to get rid of because he has a much higher like health recovery rate. So you want to stun him down and you want to build up damage over time and just let those kill him eventually. How do you get dots? Anytime Nisa assists, and that will be every time an Ewok uses a special ability, Nisa is going to have the chance to attack three times. Each of those has an opportunity to uh, to land a damage over time effect on the enemy, which means Nisa is going to want some potency for this event. I think I have to double check, but I think I keep a potency mod set on her at all times. Um, and I also think I go for tenacity. I'm not sure. I don't recall how I got her modded. But what you want in general on all your Ewoks, especially for this event, is health mods, health primaries and lots of speed lots of speed. Wicked is totally fine. You probably want to put a crit damage mod on him. Believe it or not, he has the third or fourth highest non-GL damage in the game. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Wicked. It's really, really up there. And if modded right and you get those those uh, buffs on him and stuff, he can his special can hit for a lot of damage. I mean, no, we're not talking slicker level or anything crazy like that, but way better than most people realize because they don't mod him right. You do not want critical chance mods at all. You do not want critical chance mods. Do not put critical chance mods on Wicket or Nisa, and do not put critical damage on Chief Chirpa. You want health, health primary triangles on everybody, except for Wicket and Nisa. There, you could probably get away with critical damage on Wis w Wicket and Nisa. Wisa, Wisa, Wisa got Jar Jar. All right, now why Logre and not Poplu? Because Logre has AOE, Ally Foresight, which is going to help you survive, also gives the entire team 20% turn meter to outrun the, the rebels. And then his uh, prophetic visions or whatever, the other ability, it will strip off 100% turn meter from the enemy and it will daze them all so they don't assist. Chupio and Chewbacca are both going to assist. You need to shut that down. That's what Logre is there for. Ewok Elder, believe it or not, is not there for the revive so much as he's there for the turn meter driving with his basic. Poplu is just going to absorb some hits and die, especially if you have lower gear levels, and then you're in a wor worried situation where you can't daze the enemy team, you can't pass around turn meter, and you are going to be forcing yourself to use Elder's revive uh, abilities instead of his um, basic. Now right there, I did use his special to revive because I didn't want to attack with him. You see, CLS, like I said, recovers a lot of health. I don't want to attack with Ewok Elder or Logre or Chirpa, honestly. I just want Nisa to put dots and then I want Wicked to make the final kill, which we got. There it is. So again, don't tell me that my Ewoks are Relic 9. I know that. I'm not an idiot. I Relic 9 them all. Um, and then uh, don't tell me that it's, it's not possible. It's 100% possible. I've actually seen people do it. You can do this with Relic 1, 2, 3 and probably Gear 12. But... It's painful. I totally get that. It's painful. Now, winning without a leader, uh, man, if you want to know how to win without a leader or kill three in the same turn, jump over to Scribe or Bit Dynasty. Like, really, they're your best friends for this. Uh, Scribe and Bit Dynasty are going to do way, way better than anything I can tell you. But essentially, I went in here with Sith, uh, Sith Eternal, non leadership under Malak, and then Wat Tambor and the Armorer to make sure that Sith Eternal never dies. I was trying to line up an ultimate hit to kill three in one turn, which is way easier when he's in the leadership position. Um, but nonetheless, this is a really, really easy win. 
win if you have this lineup. You put the ar the tank tech on the Sith Eternal, you put three stacks of armor from ar the armorer so that Sith Eternal can't be critically hit and recovers health, or no, protection. And then you just take your time and kill them off. Now, alternatively, you can get the three kills in one turn with Wicket or Nisa, but it's not worth the trouble. It's just not worth it. You can probably do it. I, 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 I believe in you all, but it's not worth the trouble, right? Okay, folks, this was my Ewok speed talk, rush through indoor Ewoks versus Rebels. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something. Uh, if so, please push the like and subscribe button. Really, these videos are fun to make, but they take time, energy, and brain power that I usually don't have by the end of the day. So thank you for watching. I'll let this play out, but I'm going to shut up now. Take care. Bye-bye.